Hey folks, yes, we're doing sanding and that sounds boring, but we're going to be using a really cool tool called a chisel plane uh, instead of sanding in some spots and you'll you'll be interested in seeing that. We also fix a few defects, minor ones, uh, but we'll show you how we do that and uh, looking forward to uh, doing this video with you. Thanks for watching. Hey folks, uh, here's the final uh, result after we glued up the edge of the box there is no top and bottom so it's just hollow all the way through there is some work I'm going to do some sanding on it I'll show you how we do that uh, there are a couple of defects here let me see if I can show you on here uh, a couple of defects we ha I had to put a little bit of uh, see where this grain does or something strange right here it goes over here and it must have had a knot close by Anyway, I had to put in some filler right here and I need to sand that down. I may have to put a little bit more filler in it when I'm done. Um, and we've got some glue uh, that comes out on a few of these things. There is one problem that bothers me. Uh, this one didn't, you see how this is, the angle is off a little bit. The pieces didn't line up. They did on the top, but they didn't on the bottom. And it, 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 it wasn't uh, the equipment's fault, it was probably my fault for not looking close enough, but everything was so tight that it was hard to see. Anyway, I'm going to just sand that edge off right there and just see what it looks like. I think it'll be fine uh, on here. Now, what I've done is in this, um, in this vise, I've, I've put in a, a two before and I'm going to slide this over the top of that two before. Now what that does is it allows me to sand without putting any pressure, undue pressure lengthwise or on the joints at all. It'll just be sanding exactly right there. So, and it goes both ways. It fits this way and this way and I can turn it around and do any side that I want. Uh, let me get this bad corner uh, first here. That one's right here. And I'm going to hold it down like this. I'm using this 220 grit Duragold sandpaper. And I'm wrapping around a piece of cork right here. And really, you're supposed to sand with the grain, so I'm, I'm going to attempt to do that. I don't want to uh, sand kind of light until I know that that oak is, is going to hold up on that. Yep, holding up fine. In fact, I'm going to sand like this at a slight little angle. That's the uh, angle that I'm talking about, but it's a very slight little angle. And I'm going to get it down to where it matches up. And then start sanding this way. We're not there yet. What I'm going to try to do is use a chisel plane. The chisel plane is an interesting plane. The blade edge is all the way up on the front edge of this thing. And you set it so that the edge touches whatever you're touching here. And you can you can just lay just this just flat. And it's great for cutting off the excess. And, and you can kind of you see how I'm moving it, scraping it in. And now cutting the edge of that all the way down. So that it's even with the other without sanding uh, is the point and, and uh, I think I've done that all the way down so now I can go back to my sandpaper since that is all right that feels good let me go up on this side of it looks like we lost a little bit of uh, grain right there Oak is a difficult wood to work with. It's so hard and so porous. Now I'm going to round off the corners just a tad little bit. And I'm going to have to put some filler for that little piece of lost wood right there. But you can't even tell that it was 
uh, misaligned unless you look at it from this point right here. And I, I, I'm not sure how I'm going to handle that part. It, it, once the uh, the bot, this I'll probably make this the bottom. Once the bottom shows up in here, that will end up being a slight little gap hole right there that you'll be able to see. And maybe I'll just put wood filler in it. And we'll go from there and leave it alone since it'll be on the bottom. So we've done one corner. Let me get this corner now. And uh, it's not up by much, but I think I may use this to get the glue off. And I'm cutting on a skew. I'm not just pushing directly against it. I'm sliding it like you would slice with a knife. And that's how I'm using that uh, and this will get all that glue off too that's above the surface. All right, that looks good. Now let's see if there's some glue on this side as well. This is where I had to fill that corner in with some uh, So it's, this is a very sharp blade, but it acts as a chisel that you can, you know, get a hold of real well. So I really like it from that perspective. All right, let's take a look at this one now. This one's got some edges on it. I'll use this. We'll go back to the sandpaper in just a minute, but this is good for getting the glue up. There's no point in sanding all that glue off. This will just cut that glue right at the end of the wood. spot in there but that's all come off and when you cut wood with a plane like that it's a very sharp plane you end up with a very very smooth surface uh, even smoother than sandpaper all right so I'm getting the extra glue off of there now shave just a little bit off but it did it some good I believe hold this you have to hold it up tight against this wood in here otherwise it will get away from you and I've got my hand down below the blade, so if I, it slips, it's not going to cut a finger. Not to say that I haven't cut myself before. I've done it plenty, plenty of times. But not seriously. So, let's see. Yeah, that feels okay from there. That feels okay. That one feels okay, so I think all those edges feel okay now. It's time to just move to the sandpaper and um, kind of round over the edges just a little bit so they won't be quite so sharp. Sanding with the grain. And then I will get the other side of that. the grain. We'll come over here and get this edge now. With the grain.
it still feels like a sharp edge but it's not sharp like it would cut you uh, kind of edge so you know what I can't remember which ones I've done and which ones I have so this is that one that Yeah, this is the one I started on right there. But I don't know that I ever rounded off that corner. Oh, this one hadn't been rounded off yet. Trying to eliminate any plain marks that may be left back by removing that glue. And now, just ease those corners off a little bit. That's all four sides. Now, the uh, you see a little bit right here. Uh, that's that wood filler. I put a tiny bit of wood filler here and a tiny bit of wood filler here. I'm going to sand those down. Now I want this to stay very flat. So I'm going to have it sitting against both of these surfaces instead of so it's to only, I mean, it tries to go down to those two surfaces. And I'm not applying much pressure. But I do want all the excess wood filler to go away so you can see excess wood filler right there so I need to keep going all right see now it's down to uh, you can see the joint again but we still see that wood filler right there, but not bad. So that'll look fine. We'll do this corner as well. This corner's got to a little bit. Looks like that corner's a little higher right there. So what I'm going to do, yep, it is definitely higher. So what I'm going to do, let's see, how can I hold this? I can put it like this, so that this piece is behind that front edge, and I can just start to grab. That looks good right there. And that's perfect. So we've got a little, it's kind of rough right here. I don't know whether that's from the spalting or, or what. It doesn't appear to be higher than the surface too much. But I'm going to sand that piece down. Yeah, it looks like I had a couple of voids. Dark spots. I don't know whether I'm going to fill that up or not. Some of this is just what you get with oak. But you do the best you can with what you got. And oak is usually reserved for much thicker projects but remember the reason I wanted to use it on this project was because it's a Christmas gift and it's it's from a tree in our own yard here um, I, I noticed that this one's a little bit proud this side is a little bit proud of this side and I want to uh, 
to do the same thing I did before. It wasn't by much, but maybe a thousandth of an inch, but I want to make sure that's Okay, all of them look good. Now, there's, uh, I guess I could sand on the inside. It'll have to be across the grain. But this will get any glue joints. See how this piece of cork does go down to a sharp corner there, so it'll be able to get that. It's got chamfered corners on the top, though. Let me get this right here, too. I'd already removed the glue with a spatula, so to speak. Um, so, I don't think we're going to have too much problem with squeeze out here. Uh, now, since I can go lengthwise, I might as well do it on these long sides. Alright, and we can do the same thing here. What I don't want to do, if I do it from here, I'm putting a lot of lateral pressure and liable to break one of those joints. So when I go lengthwise, I'm going to hold it very tight so that it, it I'm putting a lot of pressure down on that. This one done the same way. Okay, now what I'm going to do is go over here with my uh, dust or my blower here. That actually opens up any grains that got filled with uh, dust. And so the grain, the open grain will still be visible. That's part of the uh, nature of oak. You can see all these little open grains that, that are, you can feel them with your fingernail. Uh, some people fill them up uh, with wood filler. I don't, I just, I'm gonna use a uh, walnut oil or a linseed oil or some kind of oil finish on it and just leave it be like that. I like the uh, that kind of finish. So what's left on this box is to uh, install a top. And remember this was our top right here. So we've got, that's gonna go in there so that it has a reveal up there. Now here's the interesting thing about sliding something in and fitting it to a, the, you think this is perfectly square, but it's it's off enough to make it a problem that if you just simply try to measure this length and this length and go cut something perfectly square, it, it there'll be gaps. And, and it's unfortunate, uh, but that's about as accurate as you can get with woodworking. Now I have a little tool right here that I use to measure. Uh, Two, I'm gonna, each side measures two measurements. So this one now fits with a tight fit there, and I want to see if it also fits on the other side. And it does fit on the other side. So we're in good shape on that one. Now if I go this direction,
and then see if it also fits over here and it doesn't I'd have to squeeze it in just a tad to make it fit so we'll do an interference type fit in order for it to uh, to work like that and I, I use this tool I've got a long one uh, and a short one here's the long one for long stuff and there's a short one and that allows me to take measurements without a ruler and then just transfer them to the piece of wood you know with a knife or, or whatever and I'll show you how we fit that in there uh, with that basically I'm cutting it to its longest dimension and then uh, I will fit each corner to corner in where they go corner to corner and, uh, and then this corner to, to that corner and this corner to that corner and what that does is um, I may end up with oh, oh and then and then I'll take uh, a mark look at all that spalting coming off there that we won't use that part of that wood uh, and then I'll take a mark on that back on that shooting board plane and we'll cut uh, we'll, 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 we'll hold it at an angle and, and cut off just enough on either side to make it fit properly that way do it on the other side make it fit properly that way and then this way and this way and what will end up happening is those will be angles that will be cut off very slight angles and I'll have to hold it down on the shooting board plane and plane the hump that's left in there I'm exaggerating because it's, it's, it'll be it'll, it'll be cut at a slight little angle here that makes it fit slight little angle here makes it fit now I'll need to cut that hump off and I want that hump to be straight from this point to this point and I just cut it off and then it's a perfect interference type fit and uh, works really nice uh, and because we made this the way we did uh, we don't have to worry about expansion and contraction because it is glued to this MDF uh, and, and won't have near the expansion and contraction that uh, that any other normal piece of wood would have so uh, that'll be the next part of this project we've got this thing sanded up ready to go I may put a bottom in here you know what I haven't told you about the lid once we get the top in there we're gonna cut the lid off oh and I, we've got to put the uh, splines in here too so uh, I've got a measurement board I don't know where it is anyway to show where I'm gonna cut the spline so I've got to decide where I'm gonna cut this top off the top will be probably about that wide and uh, I'll just go to the table saw and cut that off but I don't want to cut it off until after I get one of these sides in here I hope that I, actually the top would be best because that way it'll be closer to the where, the, where I'm cutting is closer to the top and uh, I'll be able to run right down that edge turn it over running down this one turn it over and then this one and the last one that I cut I'll have to shim up with a 332nd thin uh, uh, shim right there and put a clamp and make sure that it's it's not going to cut um, <coughs> not going to fold in on itself when I'm cutting that final blade that's the danger of, the, of doing that but you cut the top off I can actually put the bottom and the top on and then cut the top off and then we can add the hinges and the hasp and other things uh, for decoration the bottom and the bottom the bottom and the top here's the bottom of the top that's going to be flocked uh, I've ordered some flocking you put an adhesive on there and then you just kind of spray this flocking on here and it acts like a, a real soft uh, 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 felt like finish and I'm gonna do the same thing on the bottom the rest of the side will still be the oak but that way you'll have a black bottom and a black top uh, it won't be oak but it'll be a flocking and and it'll it'll make whatever objects you put in there stand out and if I have time I'm gonna put a tray in here I'll show you how the tray works um, so here is a little device that I built to hold some tools and uh, it's actually a measuring tool of sorts but you see this little uh, knob in here that's a tray that fits in here and underneath the tray is some other things so pencils would be underneath his tray and this tray would, would fit down in there 
Uh, and this one's got holders for each one of the uh, tools in here that fit in there, which is, is kind of cool. Um, I'll tell you how I built that one of these days, or I'll do a project that uses the same tool. Uh, but anyway, that goes down in there, and uh, there's, there's no top for this. It doesn't need to be because it just sits down in the drawer. But this was another box where I did a mitered spline. So there's the spline on that mitered joint, and then I just glued the bottom of it to it. I may end up doing the same thing, gluing the bottom to this box so that it's, it's glued like that. And because since it does, it's not going to have any MDF on it, uh, it will uh, it will look pretty good with that. So uh, by putting a tray in there, it makes that box extra special. I hope I have time uh, in this project to do that before Christmas. But anyway, uh, that's it, folks, for uh, the sanding and, and getting this box ready. We'll do another uh, another series on another video next on. Uh, uh, fitting these tops and bottoms and getting those glued in and then separating it cutting it off and then putting the hardware on there Building the tray still lots to do. Uh, it's a big project, but uh, Thanks, and we'll talk to you later Hey folks, thanks for watching and uh, this video about doing the sanding of the box and everything uh, appreciate you watching this series with us like this uh, uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. That's really important. It helps uh, us get more people watching this channel. The like button does too. If you like the video, please like it. If you don't like the video, click the don't like button. But uh, anyway, uh, and then also, if you want to be reminded of when a new video gets published, click that bell. That's what that does.